free Scaro! Hello, everyone. Welcome to Radio Free Scarrow, episode number 821. I am Stephen in Edmonton. We're in Vancouver. And Chris in Edmonton. We are one week away from new Doctor Who. Um, as of right now, as we're recording at 10.03 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time? Daylight Time, right, Chris? Daylight you always time. correct me on Daylight Time. Standard Time is next uh, weekend. Next week for the UK. For the UK, yeah, sorry. Uh, weekend after for us. For Yeah, so it's good. it gets confusing, folks, and this is the worst time of year for it because uh, it's Doctor Who. Doctor Who's coming back, which means we have to time our lives uh, around when the UK moves their clocks back at 2 a.m., which is about when a press release, uh, a press pack for Doctor Who got <laughs> dropped uh, last night. To continue, Brilliant. Uh, to, yes. to continue the with the with the marketing aspect, uh, Doctor Who Chapter One: The Halloween Apocalypse, airing at six twenty five p.m. on BBC One on October thirty first, um, on BBC America at the at two twenty five Eastern Time, which is correct. It's simul. It starts off simulcast, and then uh, but not on CTV Sci Fi. Uh, it's it's just pushing ahead surprise, at, at 7.55 p.m., which is five minutes earlier than the encore viewing of it on BBC America, which they're, di- which they're billing as a premiere cut, or an extended cut, rather. Which probably isn't. So <sighs> It's all so confusing. Would you say the time slot My for that guess is, is that's... Time slot yeah. is two minutes longer or something. <clears throat> let's go. Yeah, let's get into this. So the uh, it, if you check the BBC One schedules, links in the show, you might have to do some digging around because uh, the links and um, get weirded out when you click on them. And so it's like, oh, we're we're showing you. It says it's October thirty first, but it's actually showing you today's schedule. Um, but if you look at on on the schedule on BBC America on October thirty first at two twenty five p.m. Eastern Time. It says Doctor Who, uh, Chapter One, um, the ha- Halloween Apocalypse, which is simulcast with the UK version. They did this for the w- woman who fell to Earth, I believe. BBC America did once, mm-hmm. one time only. I don't know if they're going to do this for the rest <laughs> of the series, but simulcast until the first My prediction. Com- it till yeah, until, until the, the first, first commercial break. break on BBC America. Yeah, it because was not. It, then it's not at all. And plus, it's like the wrong aspect ratio. That's not BBC America's fault. That's what BBC Worldwide <laughs> sends out to everyone. Because the version you watch outside of the UK uh, that isn't the the Blu-ray release is a 16 by 9, uh, basically cropped version of it. Uh, you get it on iTunes, on Google Play, on CTV Sci-Fi, on BBC America. It's not the actual true aspect ratio. Um but uh, so and then well, so so it's that there's a 72 minute slot for Doctor Who Flux Chapter One: The Halloween Apocalypse at 2:25 p.m. Eastern Time on BBC America, and then at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time on BBC America, it says Doctor Who Chapter One: The Halloween Apocalypse Extended Cut. I think that's either a, tra- a very short trailer <laughs> of some sort, like they did last time with all the actors, right. or or it's just a bump. It's two minutes worth of quick little interview bits. I, there's no way it's extra actual content for the show itself. Yeah, because it's like, little. It's not well, more story. Well, no it's way. it's it's <laughs> two. It's a two minute longer slot at at uh, eight p.m. on BBC America. So that's too short for a, a Doctor Who extra, which is you know like you were saying, one. That's pretty much what you're describing yeah is doctor who extra if they put that on or is it like remember when um revolution of the daleks happened and then separate to that which was not actually part of the the original broadcast program was the the dan lewis reveal the john bishop yeah reveal. it could be that yeah mm-hmm. and it is a serialized 
like a serialized yeah. series, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term. So maybe it is like a little two minute hint at whatever the next thing is, or a clip from the next one, or something like that. It could be that could be it. That could very well be it. Um, but as I say, CTV Sci Fi is not doing it. They're airing uh, various um, uh, Halloween movies leading up to seven fifty five, which is a great time to start. Um, Anyway, once again, I have problems with the uh, the broadcast. Pouring one out for space, the imagination. Oh, man, I I pour, <laughs> pour it out for a lot of stuff. Uh, for one, yes, um, the the mar- the press pack was dropped midnight UK time <laughs> on a Saturday. Yes, it was on a Saturday, one week before it even airs. I uh, let me let me compare this. I was watching a Lindsay Ellis video review of Game of Thrones. And she mentioned in it about uh, Westworld season two, about how uh, they were writing, you know, season one came out and they were in the midst of like making season two. But apparently someone on Reddit had guessed a big twist that they were preparing for in season two of Westworld. And so they course corrected and, and and wrote it, it rewrote it, basically rewrote the series because of someone on Reddit figuring out what was going That's, on. That annoys me at an existential level, right? <laughs> like, come on. What what my what I'm getting to here is that I I feel like Doctor Who is being marketed with the idea that fans are going to figure stuff out, and so we can't tell them anything, and at the expense of like the general public not getting anything <laughs> from the, you know, like, sure. We're Dr. Who, yeah. we do a Dr. Who pod- podcast for the last 15 years. Um, and so we are actively looking for Dr. Who stuff. But if, if you're just like an average Joe or Jane or whoever in the public, well, you're not gonna be looking at a press pack in the first place. Well, you're not gonna be looking case, at, you're yeah. not gonna be looking at it. You're, you're, you know, you have to be told that Dr. Who is back, but there are, there's a press pack, a, a week out of launch. There's a trailer a week and a half out there are no screeners for the UK press. No one in the UK has a screener for this uh, because fans will probably like, oh, uh, this is all crazy stuff. But like, if you're looking to put this show on BBC One as your sort of, you know, your Sunday night extravaganza and you're not telling anyone in the press about it, how much are you actually promoting the show to the general public? Maybe that's why they're glad that Bad Wolf's taken over. They're like, okay, we don't want anything to do with this anymore. Maybe Chris is in a way right <laughs> that that the BBC would like to end the show, but they just get hand over somebody else who Keep then takes bringing it over. that up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm half agreeing with you in a sort of kind of way to the side of it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's always been that way, though. The BBC doesn't want to tip their hat to the competition. And no. as a byproduct, the public... And the press and, you know, whoever they, they kind of, <clears throat> they kind of suffer because, uh, heaven forbid that channel four knows <laughs> what, or ITV knows what, what, if, time what if Doctor Dave knew of our plans? Yeah. What if Dave? Yeah. I, I just love saying that. I Dave's know. owned by the BBC though. So. Yeah. I, the funny thing I is. I just love saying it though. Is that, yeah. you know, that th- we, we always say, oh, well, they don't want to tip their hand to what ITV said. Where's Dr. Who airing? Where exactly where it aired in season 12 and 11, right after Country (laughs) File and right before Strictly Come Dancing, just where it's always been since the Chibnall era started. So like, what? wow, what a surprise. I was not expecting that. (laughs) Also, which episode? press pack on a (laughs) midnight. That's true. (laughs) press pack at midnight on a Friday is kind of a politician move. That's the, yes, we did in fact slaughter everyone, but we're going to couch it in good language and put it out on a Friday night when nobody's looking. Oh man, I I am uh, I, I I'm beating the drum again. I'm really surprised at myself at how I've completely turned against um, broadcast humanity. Humanity. It's I'm, just, I'm not surprised at all. I just <laughs> you finally embraced your inner curmudgeon. Welcome to the no, fold. Not the curmudgeon. No, not the curmudgeon aspect. The 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 the. I basically just stood up and realized that hey, wait, we're the only show that actually has to deal with this nonsense, and every other show drops their shows when they want to drop them, and here we are talking about 
uh, a, a sh- our favorite show after airing after Country File and like in a commercial uh, uh, chopped up version of BBC America twice in different cuts and CTV sci-fi having like you know nothing to do with it just sort of like oh, here's a bunch of Halloween movie, movie Halloween movies and then here's a Doctor Who episode and then we'll just get back to the Halloween I guess and it's going to drop sure whatever the time NCIS Hawaii podcast is a thing or two to say about this dude I know uh, it's a powerful fandom I have no idea I have no idea either it's just I I I am I am tired of the broadcast shenanigans that surround Doctor Who uh, I was reading a Business Insider article. It was linked on uh, oh dear. Uh, linked on Downstream, a, a new podcast from Jason Snell, talking about the the Which is good. the yes. yeah the inner machinations of streaming. And uh, it was a uh, they, they had surveyed twenty different um, uh, producers, content like producers and stuff, and they said like which is the best place to get your show made? You know, both for like, you know, to get as many eyeballs on it and both like just for actually making a creative TV show. And Netflix is, is like basically... No, network versus streaming sort of thing or? No, which streaming service? Which oh. streaming service? Um, and for the most part, Netflix is basically the Walmart of... Um, of streaming oh, services yeah. in that like yeah, most definitely like here, like get just get them in just get them in we'll chuck them out like there you go like you know that's it's it's just it's a it's a content factory but it's not necessarily like will you get promoted will your show actually get some promotion or will they just chuck it out at midnight on a tuesday um and the the one place that everyone sort of agreed to that was like the number one place to get your show made still the epoch is um HBO uh, and to a lesser extent, HBO Max. HBO Max is sort of its own little thing. But, you know, so like uh, the, the fact that HBO is still seen as like, ooh, if you get on HBO or HBO Max, then you are there, man. And mm-hmm. Doctor Who's current streaming home for uh, yes. yeah, archive stuff uh, for the modern series up until now is HBO Max. I mean, Chris, you sent us a, um, on our little text chat, you sent us a promo they're actually promoting. They're actually promoting the show. They had like a big clip of uh, what a Matt. You gotta you gotta get these guys in line. Yeah, Come on, hold on, hold on. You know, it was a slick promo and everything. It was HBO Max. It was like it's right there. Yeah, I mean somebody's got to do it, right? I suppose. So anyway, I'm hopeful. I mean, I, I it's not like I um I watch uh um BBC America obviously because we're not in America, no. but I <laughs> neither do you watch CTV Sci Fi, do you? Uh, not really. I, and I, I, you, you have it as a channel though, right? I have it as a channel. Yeah. I do my best. I subscribed for a while and I got rid of it because I was like, uh, it's either showing Andromeda right. or <laughs> Stargate or Star Trek Lots and it's showing Trek. a wall of all those. Yeah. And pretty much any Star Trek I want is on several streaming services. So I'm like, yeah, why am I paying for this? What's I know. The point? I, 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 I've tried to vote for my dollars. Um, you know, in that I have, yeah, but you should vote with your dollars by not paying them because they're <laughs> providing a crappy service. Unlike space, the imagination station, it is, it is not good. Beating the drum. It is not good. I know what you mean, but, um, no, I haven't, uh, I haven't watched any other bell media stuff like TSN. Like sometimes you see doctor who promos and stuff show up and I'm like, what the, there's, there's a doctor who thing and I'm watching a hockey game. But TSN doesn't have... <laughs> is this promo going to get beat up? What's going on I here? I know. Uh, but no, so I haven't I haven't kept an eye on... I should just keep TSN on a TV channel and just keep an eye on <laughs> to see if any Doctor Who promos just come up. straight up TSN, not like TSN 5. <laughs> Yeah. I like I like how you're crossing over your fandoms here. I'm gonna have sports stuff up all the time, but also so if I see a promo, <laughs> just for to Doctor see if Who. I can see a promo because I'm just wondering what the promotion. This is, is like, like 25 hours of studio footage. That's mm-hmm. basically what that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, except it's 25 hours of hockey locker room footage. Well, my my main boy, oh boy, how exciting! My problem is that TSN doesn't have the national rights to the NHL, so there's no real reason for me to watch TSN. If unless, well, as a Leafs fan, you should be overjoyed. Ah, uh, unless with I all the coverage uh, of the Leafs. Unless I want to watch um, football or uh, do they even have basketball? I don't even know. Um, so I don't have any. I like reason. how you're a sports guy, but you don't like football at all. I, I think that's great. Why? Oh, that is great. That is actually great. Or yeah, I'm just I'm just glad you have a line in the sand you won't cross, and that line is football, meaning American slash Canadian football and association football. As I've gotten older in life, I find that that sport to be more and more boring. I can't watch soccer anymore. <laughs> I was way ahead of you. I found it boring long ago. I know. Anyway, uh, I'm complaining about Doctor Who, the way it's promoted, the way it's broadcast. Uh, I hope it changes come the Russell T Davies era because. Uh, 
dropping a bunch of promotion stuff a week out um, and not really giving any lead up time to anyone to promote the show is, is foolhardy. And, you know, basically. I always got. Go ahead, Sorry, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Please. I was just going to say, uh, Moffat always seemed like, yeah, he'd do it. He'd do, it. You could tell he didn't enjoy promoting the show, but he was going to do it for the good of the show. Yeah. And Chibnall clearly doesn't enjoy doing it and isn't doing it. But Davies always seemed like he kind of got a kick out of he promoting did. it. So. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, what, what annoys me, and, and this, this will anger British people, so once again, for the second consecutive week, I'm sorry. <laughs> But basically the, you know, there's, they're still saying, you know, it's BBC and BBC iPlayer and they're sort of like thinking of the larger picture, but really they're still going after that, the, that overnight audience and yeah. that overnight audience for all of TV is dwindling. So basically Doctor Who is being made for the three and a half million people who are watching it on original broadcast. That's it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it should be made available to a much wider audience. Doctor Who is a, an international hit, has been for years. And it's still a slave to the BBC One schedules. Will it? Well, how soon, will it perform Sony after Country Film? This. I hope so. I hope so. Because, uh, yeah, in the space of like a few weeks or months, I've just like gone completely 180 on this. And I'm thinking, yeah, bring on the streaming. Drop it at 1 a.m. and we can watch it and then do an episode about it um, instead of having to sort of like dance around all these ridiculous <laughs> shenanigans. So part of this is, is, is encroaching old age where it's like, I want this to be convenient for me. Well, everyone wants that. I can't that. stay That's up until thing. 8 p.m. Well, yeah. That's the thing. I, 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 I'm not disagreeing no. with you. I would also like <laughs> them to do this, but. Yeah. And I don't even think you can, like, I haven't seen it for uh, pre-order for um, on iTunes, iTunes or on Google iTunes? Play. Yeah. I haven't, I checked the <laughs> other day. Which is surprising. And it's not, it, it often shows up like literally the day or two before. So even if you mm -hmm. want to get it that way, like even that's a bit of a craft channel. I'm just like. Expect so we'll, the ratings to be poor is what I mean to say. Well, while we're bitching, uh, yeah. can I just say how irrationally annoyed I am at BBC America for yeah. listing uh, Doctor Who as Flux, the Halloween Apocalypse, for the 2.25 and for 8 o'clock it just says the Halloween Apocalypse. <laughs> that is terrible. Oh, that is some pedantry. That, that is some pedantry is, right there, Chris. Is, show, show this to your wife, Stephen. She will be equally annoyed, I promise you. This is, this is the kind of thing that drives her up the wall, just as it drives me up the wall. Yeah. It's, uh, I, listen, I, uh, like, you would think Some like, poor intern uh -huh. doing a schedule is <laughs> getting your wrath right now. Is it the same they thing? I it. mean, it doesn't even say Series 12, Series 13, Episode 1, even mm -hmm. on the BBC schedule. Oh, oh man. Oh, I'll see you in The Hague, war crime. Man, oh, <laughs> man. Yeah. That is dreadful. I don't know when, I'm sorry, Australia and New Zealand, uh, I don't know when it's airing in your part of the world, but uh, I know they drop it like shortly after broadcast on like, you know what, three in the morning or something. And um, I view, yeah. You know, or I have view. have done anyway. Why not International, this time again? international simultaneous release. That's the way of the future. Actually, it's the way of the current. It's the way it's been for the past few years of Doctor Who is the last thing to get on board there. I hope this is the last series we have to deal with this. You know, it's just annoying. Um, anyway, uh, hey, so, uh, let's let's be positive. Though. I am looking forward to Doctor Who. Uh, we, we experienced yeah. what we, we experimented with the live stream stuff on this podcast for mm -hmm. the RTD news when that dropped. I think we're going to do that again for these uh, these six um, these six episode reviews here for Flux. So basically, at uh, aiming for 10 p.m. Eastern. So once the the BBC, the initial BBC airing, uh, BBC America airing is over with, is probably when we'll we'll press uh, play and, and do a live stream and uh, and record our thoughts, and you can watch along and may, maybe even comment, and we'll answer a comment or six or something like that. Who knows? But, Possibly. Uh, You'll, so have to fix the, you'll have to fix the sunlight situation in your uh, recording. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're doing a test space. right now. It looks I, like. It looks like, uh, it actually totally looks like a Spielberg. It looks like Close Encounters and the kid opens the door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the alien light's coming through. That's what it looks like. Well, gotta, I'm, I'm going to put it, I'm going to frame it this way just to uh, annoy Steven. It looks yeah. like a J.J. Abrams uh, kind of, you know. Uh, no, it looks nice. So it doesn't look like a J.J. <laughs> no. Abrams effect at all. No. If I, if I, yeah. If we're, also, there's no unmotivated yeah. camera movement. So there's that. That's true. Uh, yeah, I uh, listen at uh, at eight p.m. on October thirty first. I don't think we need to worry about sunlight in this area right now. Oh God, pretty, no! Pretty. Dark. Uh, that's true. Yes. Six p.m. October thirty first. We don't need to. 
pretty And bad. I am in a closet, so there'll be no sunlight coming mm-hmm. from here. Well, <laughs> did, more or less a closet. Did we, uh, did we mention, I can't remember what if uh, what's happened the past week, but it is it is called Doctor Who Flux Chapter 1. Each episode is going to be called Chapter. And at, fir- at first I thought it was going to be, uh, there wouldn't be an actual individual episode title, but thankfully there is. It's the Halloween apocalypse, because it's on Halloween, you get it? Oh, God. We're going we're gonna to avoid the idiotic trial of a Time Lord slash type arguments or... or- Back in the day, individual episode arguments. Yes. Back in the day, being the sixties. Yeah, no, there will. Well, I mean, there, we won't what, because fans will find a way to argue about this nonsense. Probably. But what argument? It's parts one through fourteen. <laughs> oh God! All right. <laughs> <laughs> but is it the ultimate foe, which actually was the working title for the Terror of the Vorvoids? It's season the thirty-three. <laughs> no. Oh God, no. my head hurts. No. Anyway, the spring uh, back season Fnarg. Fnarg, good old Fnarg. Ah, oh, that was eleven years ago. Um, so yeah, anyway, there's a, there's a, uh, synopsis and we never read synopsises on this podcast, but, uh, I like uh, the show notes. Yeah. If you want, want to watch a dog wielding, uh, wielding an ax, which is, which is great. I love that they're chasing Boy, some, do I. some time dog. Basically it's called <laughs> Carvinista. Carvinista is the name of the dog. Okay. So now that. without knowing anything about the apocalypse, right. uh, time dog is our episode title next week. Time I guarantee dog. you. Time dog. Time dog. The crime solving dog. <laughs> McGruff the time dog. fun anyway doctor who doctor who's back next week next week in whatever form it takes at whatever time of day it drops for you in whatever part of the world we will cover it and talk about it and look forward to it um despite the bizarre lack of promotion um some could say slipshod one one would say that um and and as i might have uh said last week the the all the social media accounts going down feels like it was just a big old mistake and not an actual yeah, thing that seems like that seems like when facebook got confronted with their badness and then they immediately kerfuffled themselves da, big old coincidence that just seemed to dovetail nicely yeah watch uh, watch watch flux chapter three have something about uh social media accounts going down Watch it, watch it be delayed. <laughs> Which they hastily something. rewrote. No. Thanks yeah. to a Reddit commenter. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Westworld Series 2. Yeah. Yuppers. Anyway, all the links to all the, there's a, there's a, the big press pack we're talking about is like a bunch of interviews with all the cast, uh, Chris Chibnall, Matt Strevens, um, some promo photos, all that sort of stuff. There's a big, there was a publicity event, uh, that happened, uh, this past week. I think it was on the Monday, I think is when it happened. I could be getting my, getting my weeks mixed up, but, uh, uh, yeah, all the embargo stuff came out. So that's, that's what it is. Um, Chibnall even, uh, even talks about Dr. Who a little bit and he says, oh, I feel like Tiny even, bit. even that I've, I've, I've revealed too much. Um, so yeah, spoilers. Oh, no, Chris, you are like, when I read that phrase uh, in my head, I was like, no, Chris, you haven't. No. <laughs> I was actually talking back to him for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> But the but yeah. the 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 flux isn't a thing. I never assumed that the flux was like here is an alien group and they're called the flux. The flux no. is an occurrence. It's a thing that has happened. Yeah, it's like whatever they called the thing that the burn in the burn. Discovery I was season three. Say. It sounds like that's what it first came to mind for me. Let's hope it's better than the burn. Well, yes, there is that. Just saying, bit of a bit of a. Week ending on the old Star Trek Discovery. That's a, that's starting oh, up they again. Have a, isn't they it? have a real gift for for having season enders where I'm like, what the hell is happening? I don't even care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come back for series four and watch it, and then by the end I'm like, what the hell is happening? I don't even care anymore. Yeah, season yeah. four starts in November. No, oh, yeah, it does. November twenty. And I'll watch it, and then I'll be confused and disappointed at the end, like I always am. Yep, yeah. that's fair. Yep. We will not be, well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll be so annoyed with Star Trek Discovery season four that, uh. <laughs> oh, you got so annoyed with prior Discovery stuff that you had to, you know, felt, you felt compelled to bring it up here. I did. Yeah. Bailed on season two. Just completely, I didn't watch it. Didn't watch season two. Mm. Which means I won't watch that new Captain Pike show because I never saw any of it. So like, I don't, I don't need to see that. I'm, you don't need to really. I expect you know, it's like, going to be set up so you don't need to. Yeah. Uh, no, better. it's set up, so it's more like the old, like the original show in that it's like week to week. It's not, there's not much of an arc from what they've, That's what I've right. read. Yeah. Which, which in itself is a, uh, I, I wonder how much they'll stick to that, you know? I mean, to Doctor Who's credit in series, uh, 11, Jodie Whittaker's first series, it's like, an, oh, mm-hmm. 10 standalone episodes. And we thought, oh, okay, we'll see about, oh, no, it is. And it was kind of like, oh. <laughs> Well, the, the thing is, like, the Star Trek discovers the opposite. It's, there's too much arc in that in that show. Like, I'm like, I, I don't care enough about this arc. Just I like these characters, but could you just 
make it make sense. Uh, yeah, I think. exactly. I think there are about three arcs on e- on each season of Star Trek Discovery. There's the one that they want to make that year, and then the other two, which are to correct the the ones that they didn't like in the previous seasons that were made by previous showrunners. <laughs> yes. Essentially, like Klingons having hair in the second season, which they should have had in the first place. Oh, did they have hair? I didn't know. Or writing out Michelle Yeoh's yeah. uh, character. Um, well, that's because they're spinning her off into a, her own series. Yeah, yeah, I know, but they they which didn't is taking forever. It, did, it mm-hmm. took forever, and so they had her kicking around. I have to say, I just as we get into this uh i because i watched season three of discovery and i didn't see all of season two but basically every episode that michelle yo was in for season three she was like basically threatening every single character on discovery with death like she was threatening to murder every single person and then she eventually leaves and everyone said the end oh boy we sure haven't miss having michelle yo around to michelle <laughs> yo's thing, character though. i think I, watching what? michelle yo <gasps> threaten people with death is a lot of fun I know, but I'm just thinking like, oh boy, the, the, the people of Discovery, like they, they need some therapy after that because they, they are like toasting the person who <laughs> actively wanted to murder them every single week. And they're going, oh, we sure missed that person. No, get help. You should not be having this reaction to this character. She was the worst human on the show. She went, that she's gone should be a good thing. Anyway. At least they're Discovery. having some consistency. Like they keep jumping around, but it looks like season four, they're still in the same time zone and it's all... Yeah, they're you know, 900 years Odette, ahead. Odette which Odette they is still kicking place. around as, as the Federation dude and whatnot. Right. And there's there's another anomaly, is, though. Is the happen. cat okay? That's all that really matters. That's, well, the, he is in the trailer. The cat is in the trailer. Is he a squid or am I thinking of Captain Marvel? Also, I think it's a she, not a he. A she, sorry. Because he refers to her as a queen. I so thought I'm the cat was just a, a cat. female cat. Uh, I don't know. I believe the cat. Again, I'm not paying enough attention. Like, I'll watch it and then forget it. Yeah. That's Star Trek. Hopefully, that's not Doctor Who. Unlike Lord no, Lord Dex is the best one so far. I know you hate it, Stephen, but it is the best yeah, one so far. I don't care about it. It hasn't let me down like Picard did or Discovery oh, has. Oh, that's a good point. Starts. That's a good point, actually. It's just kind of fun, and yeah. that's enough, <laughs> frankly. That's all I need sometimes. Also, it's they had a really good episode, which you'll never watch, where they show different <laughs> Lower Decks on different ships. So they had the Klingon Lower Decks and the Borg Lower Decks, which is just people sitting there and charging bays for like a minute, which, which is what they put over the end credits, which I thought was brilliant. Right. The, pack, the pack led Lower Decks was fun, yeah. Yes. <laughs> References. Yes, to, okay, all right. <laughs> but when it happens to Doctor Who, yeah. oh my God, well, they referenced the Fendal. <laughs> yes. officially, the san- back. officially sanctioned. Yeah, the Movellans are in it for two seconds and we're still talking about it. I but know. if Star Trek does it, it's somehow a crime. Yeah, I know. Just an officially sanctioned parody. It just feels like. How can this How can this show that has a rich and varied history mm-hmm. refer to that rich and varied history? How dare well, they? I'm not sure it's referring for as laughs, much as. No less. What, am I compl- what has happened to Star Trek? <laughs> my main complaint about. About lower decks is it's 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 what about, what about all the TOS episodes where they just end the episode with them just like throwing their head back in a laughing style? I'm not I'm not <laughs> yeah, which is what great. I what I what I don't like about it is that it's 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 a state sanctioned parody essentially. It's it like is. you know it's it's like we're laughing at us, but only at the parts that were were deemed proper to be laughed at, and everything else is okay. But in its defense, the people making it clearly love Star Trek and clearly love right. taking the piss out of star trek at the same time uh, and <clears throat> honestly it doesn't feel like state sanctioned star trek you're no. making it out to be the soviet bloc that it is <laughs> it's just a stupid tv show for god's sakes it's just a no, dumb oh, tv show making no, fun oh, of a thing oh. that everybody clearly loves on the show and uh, watching it like star trek lower this decks is, not this, is not, soviet propaganda i'm telling it's you it's not a grand conspiracy or anything <laughs> and also anything where they're spending millions of dollars on it is going to be quote unquote state sanctioned parody <laughs> Any any mockery <laughs> of Doctor Who in within Doctor Who is again state sanctioned parody. Uh, whatever the hell that it means. It doesn't have the millions of dollars of budget, but uh it's it's the the um curse of fatal death in the Star Trek world. Exactly. I, I feel like that had a little more bite to it than uh, what I saw from Star Trek. Uh, yeah, really just, here's just the justification. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can't people just like this thing? No. <laughs> like, come no, on, man. Cannot, cannot cannot at all. Have you been on the internet? No. No. Uh, good point. Doctor Who. <laughs> I'm, I'm really serious considering not being on the internet anymore, no. frankly. Uh, Doctor Who, Halloween Apocalypse. That's me wrapping this segment up here. Uh, Doc, it's, it's returning next week. It's returning next week. As uh, as we yeah. said last week, um, yes, uh, li- we're going to attempt a live stream at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern time. So sorry, UK, you'll be asleep. Uh, Australia, I, don't, I literally do not know what time of day that would be for you. Um, <laughs> it's a week from Tuesday. 
It's a week from so mostly it's for North. If you want to hop on, uh, we'll 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 paste a link in the uh, the old Twitters and Facebooks and wherever you find us. And uh, yeah, we'll do we'll do, we'll we'll do one of those. We'll do Just and then literally it, it'll drop like an hour, <laughs> not even after we're done. Like we stop yeah. press record on it, it'll take as long as it takes to chop it together. Pretty much as is. No recording yeah. breaks. This is 1960s Doctor Who. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. So there you go. Uh, that's I just, I've just, I've just realized the contradiction within Stephen. One of many right. uh, <laughs> love of tube, tube channel, like tube TV, uh, '60s Doctor yeah. Who, but at the same time angling for HBO Max. Why can't everything be old, but also do it new? Right, exactly. It's good. Conf- Listen, I'm, I, we're, we are all complex human beings, Warren. We all want. To- okay. <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay, so complex means contradictory. How many times, Warren, have you? Partially, yeah, you're probably right. Par- I'm going to agree ahead of time with whatever this is. <laughs> partially out of a joke, but then as th- the more you think about it, why haven't we done this yet? A live uh, multicam episode, or even a children in need oh, of course. version of Doctor Absolutely. Who. I don't, I don't even disagree with you on the uh, on the streaming thing. I just think it's funny I that's, that you're so adamant on two different fronts that are completely opposed to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just wait till he uh, petitions for the show to get made in black and white again. I don't want that. I don't want, I don't want that. Remember they made that Oscar and it was a silent movie and it won all those Oscars, the, the, that movie, The, the Artist. Artist. Yes. And then Which no, I haven't seen. And then no one, no one has. That's the thing, Warren. No one has seen it. It just won a bunch of Oscars and then everyone just went away. And then. I heard it was good. Well. Oh. It was the only silent movie made between now and 1927. It somehow won all the Oscars. Well, for, for good reason. Yeah. <laughs> like. Because no one wants to watch a movie that doesn't have any sound on it. Silent movies. Well, apparently silent a bunch of movies still have sound. Um, it's, not, it's not talking. Well, they have sound performed by some guy playing a piano yeah. next to the stage, but I mean, uh, need to get like Vangelis doing it or something, and then it's, you know. Speaking speaking of that, there's a guy I, I can't remember his name, but he follows me on Twitter, and okay. he wrote the Muppets Great Gatsby script, which kind of, kind of passed around. Yeah. Anyway, he also did a thing where he took Batman Returns and made it into a silent movie, and it totally works with Danny Elfman's music. Wow. Which one is like uh, he took a, that's a, the Danny the DeVito one. one, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes, but it, it totally works with the title cards and the Danny uh, Danny Elfman music and all that. Yeah. It just the rhythm just works for some reason. I don't know why. It was oh, pretty cool. Rather, Shout out to a guy whose name I forget. You have to pick the worst of the four. Uh, you were wrong. You were absolutely wrong. Uh, yeah. Is that the first Christopher Nolan one, or is that the second Christopher Nolan? Oh one? God! All right, let's moving it's on. The first to the Robert Pattinson class. one. Let's, uh, they, I know they make, they keep making new Batman movies. I don't understand why they're doing it. No, we don't need more Batman, no, frankly. We really don't. We really <laughs> don't. Um, there's a, it, so for some reason, uh, I, on a whim, I, I like that I, I, I bought the Blu-ray for class, which arrived this past week. Haven't watched it. Opened the wrapping, put it right on the shelf. Um, you won't. Completionism. <laughs> But uh, but it, it was it was the fifth anniversary as we talked about in the time lash um, last week of class uh, and and the Radio Times did a massive article on it like a massive article on yeah. on class about like how it came to be uh, it was almost going to star Frank Skinner um, mm-hmm. in a potentially different role than his uh, his um, uh, what was this? I can't remember the engineer Mommy guy Express. Mommy Gus, Express. No, engineer, Gus yeah. the computer yeah, Gus the computer. Um, um, I can't remember I his can't name. Remember his character name. Nope. Yeah, nope. I can't remember his character name. Anyway, uh, Patrick Ness uh, pushed back against that and made it about the kids instead, and like how they had ideas for series two and stuff like that. But uh, in in a theme with uh, with the earlier part of this episode, uh, of course, the BBC bungled the launch of it, and no one knew what to do with it, and it aired like eight <laughs> months later on BBC America, and it all just sort of collapsed and fell in and on itself. Uh, but it's a big deep dive. Well, in the article, they cite how. In the article, they cite how BBC Three went to streaming and off the air, and they were like, "Well, we just got sand." They say this specifically, but the general gist you get is that they felt like they really got sandbagged by that. That nobody knew where to see this thing because no. where the hell did, did they, BBC Three go? Do they also add in the fact that so BBC One had to show it because of the way the BBC works? Did they talk about the fact they just dumped it at like two in the morning on BBC One? No, they didn't mention that. They was, it was more about BBC Three, and they're mm-hmm. like, well, what the hell? And the other thing they mentioned, which caught my eye, was that they wanted to do a whole thing with, you know, the Weeping Angel show up, spoilers, at the end uh, of the of the last season, <laughs> and they wanted to have a whole thing with the Civil War on the Weeping Angel's mm-hmm. home planet, but, they, but it would still be mysterious. And I'm like, I don't know if class is the proper venue for that. That'd be like throwing, I don't know, a, a bunch of stuff into Torchwood, and then people <laughs> who aren't watching Torchwood have no idea what's going on in Doctor mm-hmm. Who proper. Surely right. it would rival Captain America Civil War. If not top uh, yeah. it, if not also, top it. Also, I, I criticize that, but what is Marvel doing exactly that with a bunch of stuff happening in their TV shows that then shifts in the movies? So who knows? Maybe it would have worked. 
Or maybe not. Probably not. Or honest. maybe not. Yeah. Anyway, it's an interesting, uh, you know, I haven't seen Patrick. I know Patrick Ness sort of like kind of angry with everything and sort of like stormed off, you know, on social media for the most part. Um, uh, but so the fact that he's talking about it again um, is intriguing. I can't say I blame him. Yeah. He was kind of mishandled. <laughs> I'm just, just skimming the article and I like how uh, there's mention of, I, I, I'm assuming it's um, Patrick Ness who's saying this, but I can't see. Um, being in Toronto and seeing billboards and bus ads on bus oh, yes. stops and TV yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And how none of that was happening in the UK. Well, I'll tell you the weirdest thing about being in Toronto is seeing billboards for Canadian television shows. You're like, oh yeah, that's a thing. Cause, cause usually you're near this, where the CBC building is and that's where the billboards are for whatever the show is that nobody cares about. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. I guess, I guess this stuff is made here. Never gotta mind. See, gotta yeah. see those 40 foot Jan Ardens. <laughs> it's it's basically it's the same but uh, like everything Canadian a very scaled back version of when you go down to LA and you're reminded that oh yeah, this is where they make all the TV yeah and because I've got billboards everywhere for shows you've never seen and artists you've never heard of it's, oh boy it, it, it takes you back because that was what 2016 right five years ago five and years uh, ago. Yep. that's when that's when space was still space and when they mm-hmm. had full full promos for cla- Doctor Who spit off in Canada and we had the the most promotion because Canada mm-hmm. chose to air it when the UK did because <laughs> uh, we back the wrong horse and now ctv sci-fi we get like two tweets a week literally two <laughs> tweets a week from their from their promotional account about anything not just doctor who but anything they're doing like when it pops up oh my god they're tweeting holy crap steven hmm? steven we've we've both worked uh within television stations and we've known marketing people granted a yeah. long time ago but does this track yes it does yeah it does. did i did i say i might have said it already on air uh about how twitter accounts for um uh tv broadcasters went from uh not knowing what it was and so just having someone from accounting program three tweets a week to put out and then getting a dedicated social media person and then of course laying everyone off and just having now someone from accounting schedule three tweets a week like yep. they just come full circle and they even do that with their <laughs> schedules like look that's that's basically the story of much music in a nutshell big deal now it's nothing I know so. I, I, I wonder if they look at it and go well you know what Netflix gets a lot of subscribers and they don't promote anything that they do and unless you know they manage to throw spaghetti and have it hit the wall like Squid Game and they go oh, wow what brilliant strategy by Netflix look at that I think no you don't have you know how many shows dropped between Bridgerton and Squid Game? Uh, about 800 a day new Netflix productions dropped also, this, and never this, made a I, I ripple. And uh, and everyone thinks that, oh, Squid Game, oh, look, another hit for Netflix. No, it's not another hit for Netflix. It's a second hit for Netflix in the last year in between but, 800 but, other things that just came and went because no one ever mentioned it. The other thing about about the, the situation is that the Canadian television network, mm-hmm. looking at what Netflix does, is like kids uh, playing pickup baseball, going, I wonder what they're doing in the major leagues. Something completely unrelated to you. These are two <laughs> completely different animals. Like, Netflix has all the money, and yeah. you do not network in Canada. True. They have money they just throw around, and they just... Uh, I'm glad Doctor Who isn't coming in. Well, it's glad, just, the, the scale is not even comparable, is what I'm no. saying. No. No, I'm, 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 I'm all too surprised that Netflix still is, is adhering to the drop everything at once and hope someone finds it. Um, I am too. It doesn't make a lot of sense. No, but. I mean, Apple TV plus is doing it right. Um, prime, I think is doing it that way. Disney plus is doing it that way. You know, they launched with that, you know, with their, I mean, true. They I think all of them, I can't think of anybody who isn't. Who is it just, you. although, than, you know, I think well, Amazon, maybe I think Amazon, I think Amazon for the most even, part is, is even, dropping stuff. <clears throat> even Amazon does, um, some like one a week kind of things. Occasional, but for a lot of shows they just sort of there you go. It's all there for you. But I think like I, I think, I think with, back to like Netflix. I remember American Gods. I think was one a week. Head. Yeah, it was. That's true. It was, um, wasn't it? Yeah. It good, was. o- good Omens was all. But it was also a, a co-production with somebody else, right on TV. I think uh, Good Omens was all at once, yeah. wasn't it? I can't good Omens was all at once. Yeah. yeah. Good Omens was yeah all at once. I think Upload was all at once, which was quite good by the way on uh, Amazon. I have never heard um, of it. It's a comedy, basically, oh. about a guy who gets his brain uploaded to a luxuriant afterlife, oh. and uh, then everybody else is not in a luxuriant afterlife. Mm. It's yeah, I'm not really doing it justice. It's quite funny. No. Uh, anyway, um, I read somewhere, I mean, this has actually been on Downstream, that the reason Netflix does this is because they have so much stuff. They have they too can't much. They single stuff. out any one yeah. thing for marketing, and then, yeah, so it doesn't make any sense to put stuff out week to week, because then you have to actually pay attention to this or that. So as opposed to like, here's the thing, now yeah. here's the next thing. And if like they, said, they can market yeah. stuff more easily if they have it all in one go. Yeah. If they made the effort of trying to 
change that around, mm-hmm. you'd also run a lot of risk of backing the wrong thing, like promoting yeah. one thing over another and having the other one actually being better or more well received or, mm-hmm. or whatever. And, or more viewers. And yeah. Then you, yeah. Then Which only they would know. Then it's wasted money, wasted effort on, on the one that didn't pan out. Yeah. It's, it's like mm-hmm. Netflix is almost like, Hey, get Netflix. Like Netflix is the, yeah. is the big promotional poll, not what's yeah. on Netflix. Hey, get Netflix. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's working well enough for them that, you know, yeah, get Netflix, spend your $12 a month or whatever the heck yeah. it is. Um, um, here's all this stuff. And then everybody else takes, a, takes up the mantle of, Oh, have you seen squid game yet? Have you seen 3%? Have you seen mm-hmm. Daredevil? Right. Have you seen whatever? Uh, and, and that way Netflix doesn't have to spend the money on promotion. Everyone else. No. Yeah. I mean, how much them. squid game promotion mm-hmm. they've done barely anything compared to everybody else saying everything about squid yeah. game, including yeah. people watching it at home. And that's the other thing. Like we don't like binging particularly, but there are no. probably people who do. So and, people, and, and any, promotion, any promotion they need to do, they might put a couple extra squid game trailers here and there in, in between episodes of whatever else you're watching. Yeah. Oh, well, they always Which put a trailer. Is, yeah. There's always a trailer there, but, yeah. uh, but they might yeah. do more of that show's yeah. trailer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then, so it's still internal kind of stuff. Like it's not, not stuff that you and don't see a big show like Squid Game. A, unless you have a subscription. Sorry. Yeah. I haven't watched an episode of Squid Game no, at no. all yet. No, yeah, no. I, mean, I might because apparently it is very good, but but it's always on that top tile telling me, watch Squid Game. I, I'm like, what? it's funny whenever I and watch. They, and that's the only promotion they need to do right now. It, it, well, it's funny. Yeah. yeah that, that's that's all they do is that like whenever I see like Netflix, will say, oh, here's the top things in Canada. I go, okay, let's have a look at the top programs in Canada. And literally, it's the things, it's whatever Netflix puts on their main page and their loading page. Mm-hmm. P- people for the most part still just want to go oh what's on Netflix oh okay here we go I'll watch whatever they put in front of me well Basically, I mean it's a I, was, I barely channel. watch anything on Netflix because I get exhausted looking yeah. I'm just like ah, hell with it I, I was listening to, yeah, exactly. listen to a podcast yeah. the other day and, and one of the people on there the, was saying how she she uh, she watches a lot of Star Trek and, and whatever series as, just as a thing and uh, decided okay I want to try like Netflix roulette kind of thing and mm-hmm. just like throw me throw me Throwing some random, who knows what it is, um, weird, esoteric out there. Just give me something new. All right. And she got another Star Trek. <laughs> so, <laughs> like. Good. <laughs> there is a God, apparently. <laughs> it's Star Trek. So, even, even if you want to get away from what you've been watching, yeah. their algorithm is like, no, nah, you don't. No. You don't. Just no, stick with is, what you know. This is why I don't and like they're right. anything. I probably don't. I don't. Honestly. I don't like or rate anything on Netflix because I don't want to be tied into it. They go, no, I don't want. No, uh, just, I don't either. Just because I had pizza doesn't mean I want more pizza. I want something other than pizza, maybe. <laughs> you know? I watch so little on Netflix that my keep watching queue is just Deep Space Nine. It's one tile. <laughs> yeah, mine was it's, two. It's, it's, it's mine Quark was looking two. at me, going, yeah. "Watch this show. Yeah, hey, what on. about it? What do you got to do? <laughs> hey." <laughs> anyway, when Doctor Who uh, comes to HBO Max, uh, it uh, it will be. <laughs> different than this it'll be different it'll be on like sky plus or something who knows in 2020 no so be i think it'd be on iplayer maybe it'll drop on iplayer first and and have their obligated airing on maybe it'll be on iplayer like at like you know whatever time it drops on hbo max and then it'll air that night you know maybe (laughs) do it like australia does put it on put it on the on-demand service as soon as the bbc airs it yeah Uh, but you know just change it up for the bbc and then the terrestrial broadcast goes out was it like Four days later on a Thursday or something. Yeah. I think it was what it was last year. I could see it dropping on a, this is this is mostly wish casting, but I could see it dropping on like a certain day and then still airing like on a Friday or Saturday or Sunday or something <laughs> it's like It's all wish casting. It is. <laughs> it's 100% wish it casting. It is, but you know what? I just think the nature of the industry is sort of like, is pushing that wish casting towards, I mean, I'm only wishing it because I feel like it's an inevitability and I'm just now at this point, it's like, well, just, yeah. just get on with it. I'm, you know, instead of having well, yeah. a multi-pronged uh, way of like trying to like, you know, I'll, I'll order it on iTunes and it won't show up until like 1 a.m. And as I said, it'll be the 16 by 9 version. It'll be cropped. I'll, I will be paying money for a cropped version of Doctor Who uh, just to support the well, show. Well, the thing is, the BBC, it's not really going to be their problem in a little while. So why put any effort into it? It does feel, you know, it's weird. It, it does kind of feel like like series 10 of Doctor Who was kind of like, we're waiting for the the next one. Let's sort of just get this, you know, they didn't put a soundtrack out for the series 10 music. It was mm-hmm. just sort of like, 
well, we were kind of waiting for Chibdo to come on and start Doctor Who, and uh, so we we're looking around for a showrunner, and then Moffat just came back for the last season anyway. They had taken a year off before then. It was just kind of like, I liked it. I love Series 10, but it was very much like BBC was kind of like, we're, we're ready to get the new regime in here and get something new on. And once again, By I the feel way, like we're to, kind of right there again, you know? Just to totally go back in history, remember what a panic we had when they said, Doctor Who's taking a bit of a rest. I know. With a few specials with David Tennant. We're like, whoa, what? Mm. Hold on. Hold oh, on. on. What are you talking back. about here? Yeah, not, not, 2009. Not not, not even, um, but I just remember the abj- I and mean, now we're yeah. just kind of casual. Okay. It's not gonna be around for a year. No. Okay, fine. Whatever. <laughs> but at the time we're like, oh no, the dark times have returned. Yep. Yeah, I don't think we were too happy when it was only what Dr. Mysterio. Was yeah. It was only only episode for a given one year. whole no, year. I weren't thrilled, but I, but, but, but it wasn't the panic attack that it was no. with, with that because it yeah. felt like, oh no, a hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. We, we, we had a lot more to worry about in 2016. Like glass, maybe glass was uh, our, uh, was that's, our, <laughs> that's true. Yes. <laughs> our respite in 2016. <laughs> Yeah, Yeek. but at least we got the doctor in it. That's true. <laughs> I'm yeah. so stressed. Let's watch some YA that fleetingly mm-hmm. has a doctor in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you've watched things for less, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. Uh, it's in, it's uh, we're in interesting times now though because we're officially now uh, you know we're about to embark on the last series of Jodie Whittaker's Doctor Who. Um, uh, by Christmas will only have, uh, by New Year, we'll only have two episodes left, being the Easter special and the finale in October of 2022. But at some point, um, maybe the spring or July, you know, or early summer, once uh, everything's all in place and new sets are built and casting and all that and scripts are written and everything else, um, that Doctor Who will be once again made under a new regime. Um, so... <laughs> Newish, anyway. Yeah. What, yeah, what's old is new again. Oh, I think it'll, it'll it'll feel new. I think it'll feel new. I don't. I don't think. Bring back uh, Mel Young. I don't think uh, uh, Russell T Davies and Julie Gardner and Jane Tranter will are no, looking to I, like say, okay, let's pick up where we left off. What are these HD cameras yeah, doing I here? Let's go back to SD. <laughs> no, I think it's going to be a brand new thing. As you know, for their own <laughs> legacies as much as the show's legacy, I think they they don't want to be seen as we're the same old, same old, bringing it back. I think they want to series push series ahead fourteen, again. scene one, exterior, Bad Wolf Bay. Bad Wolf Bay. <laughs> There's Rose, you know, a 42 year old Billy Piper on the beach, you know, with uh, try to act like she's 18 again. No, I don't think that's going to happen. Billy Piper's older now, everyone. Billy Piper is older now than she was when she was in Doctor Who. That's a long Funny. time ago. So I'm not sure that's how time works. Yeah, it's a long time ago for her. Mm-hmm. It's I saw, I can't remember who this was, but somebody on Twitter said, oh, when I see a young actor go, oh, I, I just love watching old Doctor Who. And then he's like, <laughs> crestfallen. And he's like, I think it's them watching something on VHS from the Sylvester McQuarrie. But no, they're talking about David Tennant's run. <laughs> oh, no, it's funny. I'm so old. It's funny you mentioned that because uh, Jacob Anderson did the press pack. Uh, I didn't realize how big of a nerd he is, but he, his doctor in a way is watching old VHSs of Sylvester McCoy. Paradise Towers. His first Doctor Who experience, war. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. But of course, he, he mostly watched it during the David Tennant era, of course, because modern modern Who. I don't call it new Who anymore because it's 16 years old, but uh, yeah. modern So who. does that mean maybe he enjoys um, 25 hours of studio footage from season 24? No, I only would like certain to, insane people enjoy that. In the event that I interview Jacob Anderson, I will, that will be my first <laughs> and only question. <laughs> Have you watched the 25 hours of raw studio footage from season Can you 24? imagine if he answers in the affirmative and then just guys, you both of you go off for like a half hour about the studio <laughs> footage? I, was, I would like to see that, to be honest. I, I would was, actually like to see what comes of that. Yeah, maybe. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look back. How about in the, in the history of time itself with the Time Lash, Doctor Who, the Time Lash, our weekly look back at stuff that happened this week in Doctor Who history as we speak. Uh, the 24th of October, six years ago, Maisie Williams' birthday. Uh, it wasn't when she was making it. was her 18th birthday. Uh, the Woman Who Lived, the second part of the the woman the the me uh, duology, I guess the two parter, um, the muology, if you will. <laughs> the meology? Sure. that one, yeah. Um, set with a uh, the Theral, the the, the time traveling lion, and uh, <laughs> not expressly called a Theral, no. but we all did anyway. We all did. It was yeah, anytime we're gonna have a time traveling lion. It's got. I mean, Carbonista has got to be um, 
the garm, right? I mean, that's the garm. <laughs> See, I, I just love how, when we do this all the time as fans, we just take whatever, t- again, from Lower Decks. Have to, yep. <laughs> we're, we're self-parodying by doing this. <laughs> we are. We're just, you take one of the most incomprehensible yep. and complex, uh-huh. to be fair, yep. uh, and I've watched it again, and I like it a lot better, Warrior's Gate, but something that your average fan is going to go, what the hell is this? And we instantly say, no, this guy has to be a Theral. He's obviously Based a Theral. Based on nothing. Based, well, he's got fur, so he must be a Theral. <laughs> like, Kevin yep. McNally is playing the updated version of Olvir. <laughs> Kevin <laughs> McNally, I think you'll find, is, of course, Hugo Lang, who is returning to Series 13 Flux. Um, he will be. He won't be. He'd be able to run a company Self called Ron Wilson Remus or something. Yeah. Uh, as, as I keep saying with Series 9, I, I my, my race memory of this series is not uh, as, as strong as other seasons because I haven't watched it as much and it's more recent and stuff, but my main abiding memory of the woman who lived, oddly enough, is the uh, microphone pack hanging off one of the uh, the two um, <laughs> medieval oh, soldiers? About that. Yeah, that's that yeah. sticks in my head. It's like it's right there. It's right there, and the whole shot's like fourteen seconds long. I see a microphone pack. Yeah, Go it's nothing it. to do with like you know the the dramatic scene in the library where she's talking about having you know outlived her children and all that kind of nope. stuff. It's the nope. microphone pack. Microphone, on- yeah, which is a great scene by the way. Yeah, um, yeah, the microphone pack alerts cinema sins. Yeah, it's funny actually, uh, you know, because for for years no one noticed the big massive boom mic in shot in that one scene in City of Death um, until someone pointed it out. Now that's all I can see. And then on my my daily Doctor Who watch, which I've been continuing, watching one episode of Doctor Who a day leading up to the 60th anniversary. I haven't talked about it. I haven't tweeted about it hardly at all. I'm still in Hardo, but I just finished uh, The War Machines yesterday, so I'm Uh, almost on Hardo. But I watched, what was it, episode one or episode two? Um, there was a shot. Basically, it starts off with a press conference, and there's a um, a model of Wotan, the computer and stuff. And then they cut away to a wide shot, and there's camera two fully in shot. <laughs> taking the shot. <laughs> well, it's a press conference. But it's a so press conference. You can kind of get away with you it. You can kind of get away. It's kind of like the film camera in... Uh, spirit from space, where, there's a, where the oh, right. reporters yeah, yes. are harassing the Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart coming into the hospital. And but the great thing is, is that yes, that's the camera in shot, but that camera is actually functioning as a news camera. It's a brilliant way of doing it. Well done, Dr. Mm-hmm. Mark. It's like using the lighting rigs in the aforementioned Warrior's Gate. Warrior's Gate and causing an industrial dispute that lost half a day's recording. Yeah. Ah, oh, the heady days. Did Warriors Gate air this week? Oh, I sure hope so. We've been not. talking about it enough. Um, <laughs> no, but Pyramids of Mars did. Pyramids of Mars. October one of the greatest favorite. ever. Warm one favorite. of the greatest ever. Yep, forced entry. That's not my uh, favorite favorite, but it's definitely up there. It, it's your... It's just, it's just so good. It's, it's so good. It, yeah. It is very good, isn't it? Um, it's good enough it's that we delightful. use the Sutek Time Tunnel sound for uh, the randomizer. That's true. I don't think we heard it in episode one, though, did we? I don't remember now. When when episode one, what happens in episode? What's episode one thing? ends with with the guy coming out and <gasps> doing the, the that's oh, true. That's yes. right. I the, the he brings Sutex's gift of death. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's which right. is a great effect. That the smoke dude, effect the is so cool. Killed, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, Peter Mayock. No, Peter Mayock is a guy, but somebody he, he plays somebody else in. Uh, somebody did play the guy. You're right. Yeah. In Deadly Assassin, <laughs> he was not from the Middle East. I'll break that to you right now. Um, oh well, I, yeah, that's Next, that's my uh, one flaw in the Persian. Next, you're gonna tell me Lee Sen Chang was played by a non-Chinese uh, person. Yeah, it's, uh, it's and there's there's a bit of Egyptian stuff at the start that's like a little, uh, but still, I I love it so much I can't. Uh, listen, it's okay, the product of the doctor time. walks in eternity. It's a product of that. It doesn't make you a better person to be able to point out the flaws of the way television and indeed all most entertainment was made back in the day. You can enjoy <laughs> it and and also accept its problems. Uh, I, I've been watching uh, uh, the James Bond movies. I bought all James Bond movies on for like 100 bucks on iTunes and I watched Dr. No. And let me tell you, folks, 1962, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like, so are there any Chinese people? No, the main villain is... And it's is, not sexist at all? No. No, not, not the slightest. But, yeah, that, uh, but you know, 1962, man. Are they, are, is Different it quite as bad as like Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's? No, or? God, oh, that's God. the worst. Nothing's that bad. <laughs> it's, but, but that, that is, that is painful but to watch. That's, that's, a, it's funny you mention that because that's the one that I sort of bring it. Like everyone just, oh, isn't Audrey Hepburn so glamorous in that movie? Oh, she's wonderful. Breakfast. But nobody ever talks about the Mickey Rooney thing, which is like a, just appallingly offensive. It's, it's, but it is really you terrible. know what? You got, you know what? I, I, I cannot 
uh, you know, I will watch it and I will accept the fact that that happened. Because uh, if if we cover it up, it's that's what the fast forward button is for. No, no, it's not. You sit there. You you sit there. And you uncomfortably watch how white people treated Asian people for those entire seeds, damn it. Just think if you were Asian and had to watch that, how awful they would feel. Well, you, white person, feel bad about what we did to people over the past millennia in their portrayals on screen. Anyway, thankfully, there's no such uh, no yeah. such things in full circle, unless of course there's like Marshman erasure or something like that, which uh, maybe it wasn't a true uh, depiction <laughs> of uh, the Marshman. I just want to go erasure. off on a complete rant on Doctor Who Twitter about Marshman erasure because <laughs> somebody will pick me up on it. And go, yes, finally yeah. somebody's speaking to power on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Andrew <laughs> Smith's full circle. He was on location for the making of that when he was like 17 years old. He had to like bring ID thinking, yes, I'm old enough to be in a Doctor <laughs> Who shirt. Shoot, rather. And, you, and you've been on that location with him. I have. That's right. Went to Black Park in 2017 to look at where we, where they shot uh, Full Circle back in the summer of 1980, I think it was. Shot that in July, I want to say. Um, it was hot anyway. Um, it was less so in June of... 2017, but yeah, so full circle, the story that uh, that that uh, made me a, a super fan of Doctor Who. Not in 1980, mm-hmm. I hadn't been aware of its existence then, but uh, but when it came around, I liked him. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a yep. very good story. Uh, what an eventful day, October 25th. Mind Warp, aka uh, the Trial of a Time Lord, Episode 8, as Warren uh, commonly calls <laughs> yes. it. Uh, and thus the oh, all the time, yeah. the exit of Perry, Perry's last episode, Nick LeBron, oh, yeah, and yeah. exited the show. <laughs> the increasingly confusing exit of Perry, then retconned a mere four episodes later, or whatever it is, <laughs> yeah. six, I guess, six yeah, episodes yeah. later. Ah, uh, yeah, but boy, how fourteen of trial of the time lord. That's true. It's only title. It's only, it's only title. We must only call it by the trial of the time lord. Megabyte modem. That's its proper name. Part fourteen. <laughs> Don't you contradict me on this? Maybe we should just name all fourteen episodes different names. You know. Well, they, already, they, already, modem. they already are named different. Uh, you're talking because of episode one, episode two. Yeah, episode just two, arbitrary names. Four, you know, like, yeah. like people who say like, oh no, it's not called Mission to the Unknown. It's called Dalek Cutaway. It's like a, it's one episode to this story and it's on screen and it says Mission to the Unknown. Don't call it Dalek Cutaway. The name of the monster is episode 14, not Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, The Curse of Fenric, October yeah. 25th, 1989, episode one. It premieres to yeah. probably a criminally low audience because it's one of the greatest Doctor Who stories of all time. I begrudgingly accept this hypothesis. It yes, you do. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the the biggest victory I think Curse of Fenric can have is that it turned Warren into a begrudging <laughs> Sylvester McCoy fan. I don't McCoy think fan. anybody, even me, cares. Big enough to own the a jumper and the umbrella. Yeah, so no. good, such a good story, <laughs> and it was originally intended to air first. Hence the big reveal of his darker coat. That was the big reveal for, you know, for that season of Doctor Who. You know, Doctor Who has a new coat. Watch it on BBC One. Don't watch uh, Coronation Street. You won't want to watch that. Doctor Who's got a new coat. But we won't tell you the color until you watch episode one of The Curse of Fenric. And That's basically the, the snowman, like where he got a new purple coat. That's true. But they didn't build the promotion. They didn't build promotion of oh, Curse no. of Fenric either. But... Uh, um, also, on, golly gee, also on uh, on December for the death of the Doctor, isn't that the uh, the Matt Smith one? Right, that was it the is, Matt Smith yeah, with uh, Katie, so, yes. Katie Manning in there as well. Katie Manning, that Which is aired. great. Yeah, also October twenty fifth, twenty ten. That was on the Green yeah, Death. Really? Uh, was that the Green Death box? Set? Yeah, the Green Death box. It was set. on the Green Death. Uh, DVD. Um, DVD Come on, Sarah Jane Adventures, show show yourself somewhere. I, I would like to watch that again. Green Green Death is yeah. QQQ. No. No. Uh, What's QQQ? TTT. Uh, QQQ is Frontier in Space. Frontier in Space. I was yeah. going through Time Hop the other day, and apparently on the commentary for that, Barry, so Barry Letts and, and uh, Katie Manning were on the commentary, and apparently Barry Letts brought up Katie Manning's photos uh, with the Dalek. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Letts, there's no need for that. Oh, I don't you know, know With that. her in the room on the commentary. Oh, yeah. boy, oh, boy. What'd she say? That's enough of that? Uh, Rolls odd? Perhaps. Can't recall, but probably wasn't happy. Katie Manning uh, ran into. I don't think she regrets uh, anything like that necessarily because she was, no. uh, you know, watch watch that interview with her and and, and um, 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 I can't think of his name. John Pertwee. No, the one Matthew um, Sweet. Matthew on Sweet. The box. That's the guy on the season ten. Was it? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Season, anyway. eight. Season, eight. Season 8. Season 8 Blu-ray. Was it 8? Okay. Yeah, I think it was 8. Um, it was anyway, eight. watch that and you'll, you'll learn how much of a free spirit she was back in the day. But She uh, was. So I don't, I don't know if she Katie Manning right strikes there. me as like as like Louise Jameson, probably one of the nicest people in the world. So oh, know, God, why yeah. make her uncomfortable? She's wonderful. Uh, she might, she ran into Christopher Eccleston the other week. She posted on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Christopher Eccleston, Doctor Who number nine, as I remember. Yeah, which is pretty cool. It's always cool. It's always fun to see Chris Eccleston like just uh, rub shoulders again with you know people who are used to being Doctor Who because you know he had the great. I believe is what. You're yeah, he made for. this triumphant return to Doctor Who thanks purely to my interview with him on the uh, stage of Gallifrey One. Uh, <laughs> wow! Yep. But then the, then, state sanctioned <laughs> parody right and then, there, <laughs> and then and then the pandemic hit, and so like he never really had a chance to like sort of like hey, every, like I'm back at Doctor Who, everyone. Like, but he, so he's sort of, he's still sort of been on his on his own, you know, until until now when he ran into Katie Manning. So now I feel he's properly welcomed back into the fold. Um, uh, 2014, October 25th. Still on October 25th. What a day in history. Um, this this was an important episode because Patrick it's... Patrick it's No. Uh, uh, no, it was Frank Cottrell Boyce. It, it, uh, it cemented oh, my... Uh, my notion that season eight was my series eight was my favorite because in the forest is the night aired and I leading up to it and <laughs> and seeing what the trailer was and then like reading a couple of like early press reviews thinking oh this is the worst episode ever made I was expecting to say okay you know what they've hit nine home runs for me so far in in uh, in 2014 well eight and maybe a, a, a solid single with robot of Sherwood um, but I I really really liked the series. And here comes the really bad episode. And then I actually did not hate it nearly as much mm. as I, th- I was expecting to. And I thought, that's it. This is the best one. If the worst episode still has lots of great scenes between Clara and the Doctor and, like, the Doctor, like, uh, you know, Peter Capaldi uh, being mildly churlish with children uh, is always watchable. Um, so that was an important episode because I realized that this is the worst that they could give me and I didn't hate it. So so too bad. Whereas Chris did hate I'm, it. So I did. Uh, I'm surprised you refer to Robot of Sherwood as a solid single rather than like a sacrifice bunt. Uh, that, <laughs> wow. Actually, that's, that's, yeah, there we go. That's a good point. Listen, listen. Any episode that refers to the Doctor as a bony rascal is okay by me. <laughs> true. And, you know, one, two, three, four, he declared a spoon war. That's true, too. It's oh, fun. <laughs> it's stupid. It is definitely stupid, it's but stupid. it's fun. Yeah, it's stupid. Um, yeah. Uh, Creature from the pit. I want to bring up because we're do we're, we're on the well, we're not on the cusp. We're not on the cusp <laughs> of the season seventeen Blu-ray. Not here anyway. Not yet. Uh, October twenty seventh, nineteen seventy nine. Yes, Chris, Creature from the pit, episode one. Yeah, yeah. featuring Everybody's old woman. Everybody's got their invisible enemy, and yeah. that's yours. Featuring old woman from uh, ten thousand BC. Uh, that's right. Um, or a hundred thousand BC. Hundred thousand BC. Whatever. Or an unearthly, unearthly child. child. Or the or, tribe of gum. Yes. Or that bit. We may the, have mentioned this before, but all those people, if they were proper cavemen back in the day, were like 30. <laughs> like the, all the old people were in their 30s. Eileen Way. I know Eileen Way is who you're talking about, Chris. Uh, Not I, the actors. I mean, if they'd actually gone back in time no. to yes. the prehistoric times. I, Eileen yes. Way uh, lived until 1994, I think. She lived until the 90s. But the funny thing is, is that she looked ancient in 1979 in The Creature from the Bit. And she didn't change at all from looking ancient in 1963 in an earthly child. This is not that big of a gap. Uh, no, I would love to see young pictures of Eileen Way, just because I think she's always sort of looked like old. No offense to Eileen Way, who apparently loved cats, and thus Tom Baker got along very well with her. So mm. he says on the Tom Baker years. A VHS tape does. that came out 29 years ago. When they made that VHS tape, Tom Baker had left Doctor Who 11 years prior. And that I even, think I had that VHS tape. I, I, I certainly did, but got rid of it. Um, anyway, Creature from the Pit, which features some awesome Ealing uh, film footage. Uh, really great looking film jungle sets. Everyone yes. talks about the uh, Planet of Evil, and rightly so, but the Creature <laughs> from the Pit looks pretty good. Look at you finding a positive in there. Always find positives. It's pretty dull, though. It really is kind of dull. So is Organon in episode that. one? I don't know if he is. I don't think he is. I think they meet him in episode two. We'll no, so, episode no. two because he go he, the cliffhanger is him jumping down, into yeah, the pit. yeah, into the pit to be his creature. Yeah, the titular pit. Yes, R.I.P. Maya Francis, who died a few weeks ago. She of course played um, uh, Queen, 
Queen of Drowstone because you're what going lady, through the lady, yeah, I was going through the the Graham Williams Queen Queen <laughs> Xanthia. No, it wasn't that one. Uh, what else we got here? The Stones of Blood. Speaking of Graham mm-hmm. Williams, October twenty uh, eighth. Yeah. Now we're talking episode one of The Stones of Blood on videotape excellent, excellent stuff. Yeah, videotape location. My absolute favorite of the uh, trial, not trial of the time. Work, good lord. Key to time. <laughs> Key to, key to time. time. Thank you, yes. Key to time, chapter three. Episode 13 of the Key to Time. <laughs> what do you like about the Stones of Blood so much, Warren? Because it's just fun, mm-hmm. funny. Uh, I love all the stuff in hyperspace. As a kid, I thought all the hyperspace stuff was fascinating, even though it's complete nonsense science. But right. but no, it's just it's just a really well put together story. Mm-hmm. I agree. And good and spooky when it needs to be, even though they got giant star from rocks being menacing. Well, no, because <laughs> they have giant star from rocks being menacing. That's... Uh... Also, the Magar are awesome, and they need to come back. They yeah. do. We don't see them in episode one, but... Uh, but and we, also, we... The silver body paint. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> we want Cesare of Diplos. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Okay, to be fair, Teenage Me was a big fan of Cesare of Diplos yeah. as well, so there is that. <laughs> Viv- Vivian Fay and um, um, Amelia Rumford solving crimes. God, that's the... Sp- honestly, that is the spinoff right there. What a shame we lost to Amelia. Yeah, just recast them both. Uh, y- yeah, I think Russell T. Davies would have... I mean that's basically that's basically uh, K9 and company. Uh, you know, when you mm-hmm. think about K9 and company, is a spinoff of the Stones of if Blood. If anybody is going to make Rumford and Faye if <laughs> mysteries, <laughs> it's it's going to be Russell T Davies. Ruff- I guarantee. Oh, that sounds, if that's got could... Saran Jones written all over it. She's got to be Vivian oh, Faye. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. yes. If they could I don't know who Billy Rumford is because she's so good. I don't uh-huh. know who you'd replace her with. But... Judy Dench, Judy oh, Dench, and Saran <laughs> Jones. That'd be awesome. Miriam in... Margulies. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Yeah, she'd make a great Amelia Rumford. Yeah, that's um, true. Or if, Vivian Faye, for that matter. If, if they could have gotten away in 1978 with having, you know, this, you know, detective, uh, two female, two uh, lesbian female leads. Yeah. Uh, they live together comfortably. That's all you need to know. <laughs> it's her friend. Right. Um, if they could have gotten away with something like that in 1978, that would have been awesome. That would have been. But I'm sure, you know, somebody would have complained. Many somebodies. Oh, yeah, Mary White. Well, I hate to break it to you, but I think Twitter would probably complain now because the world's full of idiots. Hell no, we would say. But I'm here for Rumford and Faye. Saran Jones, Judy Dench, Rumford and Faye coming to BBC One and BBC Studios from Bad Wolf Productions (laughs) in 2024. An HBO Max special. Yes! Binge God. it on Netflix. It would just be like Ogre. I'd see that. Oh, like she would have the secret, but she would like try to. Oh man, it writes itself. It right there. You go, Russell. I know. I, I know I, you listen I to don't this. Don't believe Russell myself. Davies. I know you're listening to no, every single nice. second of this. But there's your spinoff idea, Mumford and Fame. I honestly don't Mumford even believe Fame. myself saying Mum- this, but it's true. Mumford I didn't and think Mumford of Saran. Fame. Mumford and Sons. I know. <laughs> yeah. Because she I didn't will think of wait. Saran Jones and Silver Paint for yeah, until you. now. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm doubling down on it. Saran Jones and silver paint, absolutely. <laughs> why that didn't occur to me until now, I have I know, no idea. I <laughs> but this is why we have these casting. This is why we have these uh, production meetings, Warren. This is why. This is it right here. <laughs> production meetings again. State, yeah. <laughs> state sanction mm-hmm. parody. This is a, if this is. is a production meeting, I demand more donuts. Yeah. Um, also on the 28th of October, <laughs> 2018, Arachnids in the UK. Yes, the first, the first of the Chris Noth. Um, uh, That's tr- <laughs> trilogy. He's not coming back, is he? I mean, they have oh, a mythology. Who knows? Well, where the hell is yeah. Letty Henry in all this? Like, here's a big mystery villain. Uh, we're never gonna do anything with I you. I know. Guys. Probably. Even when we was on uh, on Graham Norton, I thought they gonna refer to the fact that you just sort of walked away at the end of all that. But no, they didn't. Not I expected. They well, would, I, but. he brought up the fact he was in Spyfall. That's true, he did. But uh, yeah, Chris Knopf. But it just seemed like there was more to that than there actually is, from what I can tell. Yeah. Anyway, uh, arachnids, spiders getting uh, getting killed, um, uh, <laughs> basically being left to, left to starve in a room. That was the doctor's solution to uh, to uh, some of the spiders. And yeah. uh, you know, pied pipering them with some hip hop. Yeah. Um, Pretty uh, good hip hop, actually. Uh, massive, massive. Uh, day in history. Uh, I'm not talking about the wedding of Sarah Jane Smith uh, with David Tennant or Image of the Fendall episode of one. Of course I am talking about The Tenth Planet, part four, aired October 29th, mm. 1966. The first regeneration, William Hartnell into Patrick Troughton. The first the renewal. That. That's the first whatever because we, did, we didn't know at the end of that episode go, what just happened? Mm. 
And a young David Bradley watched it on TV and said, that'll be me one day. That'll be me. <laughs> Man, that would have been a thing to watch live. Like, you know, because you knew that, well, yeah, presuming you knew, uh, it's not like they promoted it heavily. Like, this is Willie Martin's last episode. <laughs> they dropped a press pack the week before. <laughs> they pretty much did. They pretty much did. <laughs> And in the post, in the post, they <laughs> yeah. didn't. They just mailed it to magazines because there was yeah. no internet to speak Well, up, so. I think they announced what October, uh, not October, August something, because they only decided in July of 1966 that Hartnell wasn't going to do Doctor Who anymore, and then uh, they made the Tenth Planet in like you know September or something like that. And like, yeah, I bet you probably said, and by the way, uh, William Hartnell will be departing the role of the Doctor on next week's Doctor Who. And that's pretty <laughs> that, much what it was. That was the press pack. It was just that, that was spinning pretty, BBC Globe from the pretty, 70s. Pretty much. And that he parody endlessly on Monty Python. Pretty much was. Oh, and then all of a sudden, okay, and then like the next week, well, there you go. There's your new Doctor. That's that's how much build there was. Man. Massive. Giant. October 20th. Wow. How, how many years ago is that? 55 years ago. Mm-hmm. 55. 55 years since the Madness. tenth one of our but form. You mentioned, you mentioned the wedding of Sarah Jane, the yeah. first uh, appearance of a doctor in Sarah Jane. That was that was a delightful episode, wasn't it? He was and and he Sarah Jane Smith was going to marry Nigel the key, Havers, the keyboard player in the Thotch, as as uh, as uh, Warren <laughs> Brilliant. might attest. Yeah, uh, but good, old thotch. <laughs> good old Thotch. Life of Brian, Life of Rock with Brian Pern. Great, great uh, series if you can pick it up. Brilliant series, or Brilliant series of series. series. I haven't watched that. That's got to be somewhere too. I don't. Uh, it's wh- what's on? It's on the David Tennant box set Blu-ray. That's what it is. That's what uh, it is. It's probably someplace else as well. But I, when when I went through the David Tennant, Tennant Blu-ray box set, I guess start of last year. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was on there, so I watched it, was it. On the, as an extra. I'm trying to think. I, it's it's got to be somewhere Brian else. Pern again. I love that series. Was that? Was that season? So, three? I just want to watch Brian Pern again. I know, me too. Why, uh, uh, Sergeant? Was that was that season three or season four? Uh, um, two thousand seven. Nine. Two thousand nine. No, was no, this? no. When it started? When it started? Was it oh six, yeah, two thousand seven. So it's season three. Seven. So I have it on DVD because I don't have four and five on DVD because they're impossible to find. Mm-hmm. So I do have that on DVD as well. Um, well, correct me if I'm wrong. We talked about this, didn't we? Was was what? Was Sarah Jane Smith, uh, Sarah Jane Adventures in HD. When did that go HD? Because I'm trying to think. I don't think it oh, was. Oh yeah, no, but, yeah, we looked it up the other week, and it, it was yeah. partway through. It was partway through. Oh, okay. I'm trying to. Day, it was not from day one. Because I know that they made uh, obviously Planet of the Dead was the first HD Doctor Who, but I'm trying to think was this the first HD that David? I know it was well, David Tennant's the last prestige show that Torchwood was. Come no, on. it was the is the last thing that David Tennant made as Doctor Who. He finished Doctor Who and then he went to do Sarah Jane Smith. Um, Dude, I'm kind of glad Torchwood took the mantle on that one because their HD is a little janky, frankly. It is a bit. That's why it was a test. Well, That's why HD. BBC Two went color before BBC One because I think oh, I could just waste waste our color test on this throwaway channel. HD came in for Sarah Jane with uh, 2009, so 2009. that that series with the wedding of Sarah Jane. Right. Okay. So it wasn't obviously it wasn't uh, it was after Planet did it obviously because they made it because it was the last thing as I said that David Tennant made as Doctor Who until four years after with Day of the Doctor but yeah Wedding of Sarah Jane Smith aired on consecutive days October 29th he shot that after end of time he did it's kind of crazy that only four years later is Day of the Doctor which this day burned into my brain by the way the time lash for November 23rd is going to be a nightmare oh my god oh that'll be a full episode on itself yeah Yeah, exactly it'll have to be I think with given all the different anniversaries we're gonna have to cover I mean, this week is money, but I mean, uh, let's let's end on this one. October thirtieth, nineteen seventy six, uh, when it aired in, in on KSBS is one of my earliest Doctor Who memories. The Deadly Assassin episode oh, one. Yeah. Oh, my God! What yeah. a week for you, Warren. Pyramids of Mars and Deadly Assassin. We get to talk about. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yep. Uh, I remember when television I, has never been bettered. Never been better. I think you're right, Warren. I really, I really have to agree with you on this one. Um, well, I'm, I'm shocked that you agree with me. My, my early, one of my earliest memories after I discovered what Doctor Who was, and then I had to find out where it was, and then I sort of stumbled on it again occasionally, and I would, I knew it was on like seven o'clock, or whenever it was on, yeah, individual episodes on KSPS in our part of the world, 
And I remember going downstairs after finishing my homework and catching the last like three minutes of Deadly Assassin Part 1. And there was the doctor. I recognized who he was. And all of a sudden he's lining up his sights and about to shoot someone. And then he shot someone. And then it ended. And I thought, what is happening? And I did not see I the rest. I thought re- that same thing. I did not see the rest of the Deadly Assassin until 1991. <laughs> so I waited like that some child abuse. six that years. Is child abuse. Six that years is. to find out what happened to the Deadly Assassin. Yep. I remember um, the first time I saw it, I have distinct, distinct memories of this. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, product of a broken home, so divorced parents, um, right. with my uh, father that weekend, and we went to some like party at, at a friend of his place, and uh, I found a TV and I was able to, to watch Doctor Who that week, and it was Deadly Assassin. I uh, couldn't tell you what year that was, but you said 85 was when I first. Oh, I could check, but I'm not going was that to. A, Somewhere around there. Was yeah, that a, yeah. Would that have been the episodic or omnibus? That I watched? No, uh, that didn't, like the first, the, the, first, the first time they put it through. Oh, it was uh, definitely I episodic. I bet it's episodic. Definitely episodic. episodic. Yeah. They didn't start with the omnibus. Uh, what I, what, what still what still strikes me is watching it, and they did that little sort of Star Wars-y scroll at the beginning, which they've oh, never done since, from yep. what I can tell. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching that as a kid and going, or as a teenager, I guess, and going, Wow, we're in for something. Something big's gonna happen yeah. here. I don't know what any of this crap is, but boy, is it looking important. <laughs> the doctor's gonna have a. I had no idea what shoulder. Gallifrey was, right? So, yeah, yeah. I, did, I had no clue what Gallifrey was all about at the time. So, oh, God. so yeah. this, but this, so this is all this knowledge dump. Yeah, it, it. I mean, everything changes for for Doctor Who the series after the mm-hmm. Deadly Assassin, like the Time Lords. Well, that was now, my first exposure. So, yeah, when I read about people getting mad about how they shortchanged the three doctors and a bunch mm-hmm. of other assery of Gallifrey that they did beforehand. I'm like, yeah, okay, guys, whatever. This is the definitive. <laughs> and to me, it still is, which is why when Matt Smith uh, uh, regenerated into Peter Capaldi, yeah. a tiny part of me was, but they said 13 regenerations. <laughs> like, <laughs> a ti- I'm, I'll admit it. A part of me was like, but no, this arbitrary stupid rule has to stand because it was in Deadly Assassin. <laughs> the holy text. Line. A throwaway line. The, the design. Exactly. The like, colors, it's utterly ridiculous the on my colors part. are still there you know as we as we talked about earlier death of the doctor has uh matt smith telling clyde that it's what 506 76 or something 507 generations yeah but well and they used another throwaway line with the death zone and the master and that's when you knew oh they're totally totally going to give him a new suite of regenerations because that's what they offered the master and the Mm -hmm. five doctors yeah, deadly sa- man. I mean, I, I have a you know. If we, it'd be fun to like sort of pick like let's let's find. I was listening on a podcast, uh, uh, BBC History Extra podcast, and some guy had written a book about the 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 hundred hundred most important things in human history, essentially, like trying to nail down a hundred most How important. How high things. the list was, Doctor Who? No, not Doctor Who, but like let's like try and pick like. Like you know, the top five or top ten like most important moments oh. in Doctor electricity? Who history. Harnessing electricity is probably one of them. In the Doctor wheel. Who. Oh, okay. In Doctor Who. In Doctor okay. Who. Let me finish. Uh, and and I have to All think right. like right. Deadly Assassin, Episode One just has to be up there just because. Oh yeah. Of of what it introduced and like that. Ever since you know, ever since the Time Lords are now like just hanging over the shoulder of the of. of the, mm-hmm. the show, you know, they're brought back again, like the very next year. Like it's almost like Graham Williams saying, "Oh, so we do the time book because he's pretty much starting to shadow Hinchcliffe around this time." So you know, so do we? Um, do we all always have Time Lords? Because uh, we can set pretty much because Time Lords are part and parcel with the show after barely being mentioned. Uh, up well, until that another point. one you already mentioned. That's another vitally important one is Tenth Planet Episode Four when yeah. he regenerates for the, or renews himself for the first time, and then Day of the Doctor where they sort of spiral everything around again. Mm-hmm. Historic week, historic week. The last week of uh, October, leading up to of course, October thirty first uh, and the Halloween Apocalypse next week. Just think, in a year's time, we'll be talking about uh, Doctor Who, the Halloween Apocalypse. Um, in the time lash, but, but not this week. And moaning about a lack of Doctor Who. Probably. Because that's what's going to happen. Probably. It's okay. We'll drop a press pack the week before. <laughs> that's true. It'll just be like a little post-it note that we take a picture of and put on Twitter somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's it for the uh, the time lash this week. Uh, time enough now just to talk about some things. This is exciting. Um, well, for me anyway, I, I for the f- literally for the first time in two years, booked an flight on an internet website 
uh, to a destination that's not here. And that destination is Gallifrey One. I have booked flights so you, to Los Angeles, California. Do you Angeles, often book flights to where you already are? Otherwise, well, I, you know what? It's been two <laughs> you just years. Get on the plane and get off the plane. It's been two years. I had to sort of think. So, what do we do? We do. We no. We booked them to elsewhere. Okay, yeah. So it's uh, it was a weird thing. It was a weird thing. But I think you know what? Here we go. Let's do it. I mean, the price. You know, when you know what life is like here, Chris in Edmonton. There's like you know one flight direct flight per day and mm-hmm. uh it seems to have changed again like for some reason it's like at 12 in the afternoon now it's supposed to 10 in the morning so we get there a little back, later it lands at like 8 p.m as well yeah which is dumb it's uh but whatever been that way for a couple of years but yeah yeah uh so i did it uh gallifrey one is like uh a little under four months away it's all mm-hmm. of a sudden that just felt like it's really coming up quick pandemic and all um I feel like we're yeah. getting there. That's where I am this week when it comes to pandemic stuff. Uh, we'll eventually get there. I but, haven't booked um, my flight yet, but I never do until Christmas anyway. Because you so. have 18 flights per day from Vancouver yes, to Yes, because LA. of Hollywood North. Thank you, Hollywood North. Exactly. Um, which is full of actors reciting lines on their uh, on their AirPods. From well, uh, they better keep their masks on while they do it. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, Gallifrey One. Uh, there's a, uh, the, the, until October 31st, the, the broadcast of, uh, f- uh, Doctor Who Flux Chapter One: The Halloween Apocalypse, which we must now only refer it to it as. Uh, that's the deadline for the Gallifrey One 2022 discussion panel suggestion form. Links in the show notes if you want to suggest an idea for a Doctor Who panel mm. at Gallifrey One. So, yeah, it's coming up. There's going to be some uh, some updates coming, I think, in the in the near future too. Probably new, more guests being announced and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, Gallifrey One's a thing that I sort of you know have to start thinking about logistically again, which is exciting and terrifying at the same time. Well, not every day is going to be interviewing Christopher Eccleston there, so and single handed <laughs> luring back to Doctor Who. Yeah, I know it's. Uh, but every day, Stephen will mention it. <laughs> yeah. To his yeah. Lego, even. It'll be on his badge. <laughs> to the giant Christopher Eccleston made of Lego. He's actually got a Lego chair and another Lego chair, life-size, with Christopher Eccleston in yep. it, so he can interview him anytime he likes. Anytime I want. And anytime. a full-size TARDIS uh, for him to suggest Eccleston walk through. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That that I claim uh, that I do lay claim for. That is a legitimate yeah, well, thing. You legitimately can lay claim to that, yes. Yeah, I told Unlike you the rest of your tapestry of lies. <laughs> tapestry of lies. Yeah. <laughs> for those that don't know... Chris Frackleson came through the TARDIS uh, at Gallifrey One on stage in his first uh, major convention interview with me uh, back in 2020 because I said you should go through the TARDIS tours. Will that give him a kick? He says. I says, yes, it will give them a kick. And it did. So you're welcome, Doctor Who fandom. Um, <laughs> you ridiculous person. Anyway. Speaking of uh, 2005. Did, he, did uh, there, he do the same the next morning when it was... when, when No, Deb? no, he did not. I don't think. I don't think he did okay. with Deb and Ty Gooden. No, I don't think... Um, I think he just. Well, I think Chris Eccleston is a little more hungover on that Sunday morning, Good. being his birthday weekend at all. Uh, I'm then, sure Jason uh, Hagelary plied him with much, much alcohols that Saturday oh, night. And, and, <laughs> now just sign this. And Eccleston just okay. kept saying, "Listen, no, I, that wonderful Canadian interviewer uh, already convinced me to come back to Doctor Who." My Hay. word, you don't that is need... enough. <laughs> Like, um, I'm, my microphone's getting clogged with peacock feathers that have just manifested themselves. So well. if you could stop, please, immediately. It's funny. I like how Warren just assumes that I'm being serious, but uh, it's... Uh, no, you're not. It's just revolting regardless. And, so. and, and don't forget, Warren, the whole interview was uh, directed by Brian De Palma. Uh, of no, it was. it was directed by the light Michael Ferguson, and there's many crash zooms in there, and they were very wonderful and well-timed. Um Speaking of uh, Eccleston and his return to Doctor Who, there, there's that book that I want to read. Uh, it's uh, The Long Game, written by Paul Hayes. Um, We've talked about it in the past. We have yeah. talked about it. Yeah, it's coming out next week on November 1st, I believe. Uh, but the Radio Times has a bit of a snippet uh, from it and how they, they the early, like the, the days leading up to it, basically, of, of them finally agreeing to sort of bring back the show. It's quite fascinating because BBC Worldwide apparently still had the rights to it but no one really knew. And, but they wanted to make a movie of Doctor Who, which was potentially going to get in the way of them bringing back a series of Doctor Who. Uh, uh, what I like is that there's um, uh, Helen O'Reilly, I, I, I think I'm pronouncing her last name right, who is uh, uh, um, basically um, Lorraine Hennessy's right-hand woman at, at the BBC, basically kept Doctor Who at the front of Lorraine Hennessy's mind, by uh, Hennessy's mind, sorry, by 
uh, having a toy Dalek everywhere, just sort of putting a Dalek, just think, yep, just remember <laughs> Doctor Who, Doctor Who, don't forget Doctor Who. It's okay, fine. We'll look into who who owns the rights to Doctor Who. And so they finally sat down and says, okay, you know what? Yeah, we can make a show. So it's like one of those things where like no one knew what the rights were. And then when they sat down and looked at it, it says, oh, well, yeah, we can totally just make Doctor <laughs> See, Who. This is what I love about online fandom. They assume... They're very angry, but they also think that broadcasters are somehow infallible. No, they know mm-hmm. nothing. <laughs> it's a good, complete disorganized mess. The minute you understand that about television or film or anything else, you'll understand so much better why things happen the way they do. I know, yeah, because we, we were, um, it's out for the Patreons, but it, it's going to come out later, probably early next year, um, our, our miniscope on Paul Cornell. And uh, we talked about Scream of the Shalka there. Mm-hmm. And when they were making Shalka, they didn't like... They didn't real like who has the rights to make Doctor Who. Yeah, it was a complete mess. What that that we, part of it was yeah. What the we organizing do? of it? Yeah, it's like there was not Shaka itself. It's weird. It's just so like it, it's in between. Like at the last Doctor Who they made it was made like as a co production between like eighteen different production companies like Amblin and CBS and Fox and Universal and whoever and like everyone was going, do we own the rights to this show that we made for twenty six years or do we? I don't know anymore. And also, they didn't really care about the show at that point, so no, why would they that, look, bother looking into that it? That too, that too, yep. Anyway, the long game. Uh, I'm intrigued. To, I, I hope it comes out in uh, an ebook copy because um, I, I just like ebooks. They 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 are they're easier to store for one reason. But uh, well, yes. But and you don't have the, the other thing about that, just as a final thing, is the IP frenzy had not happened yet. Like, no, now everybody's like, well. I'm sure legions of lawyers are checking on every single thing Everything. people own because they're trying to monetize any IP they could possibly get their hands on. But that just wasn't a thing back nope. then, to the same extent anyway. No, it wasn't. Are you going to say that, Chris? Something that I was going to say the digital copy means you don't have to Im- spend a small fortune importing a that physical too. copy. That too. Yes. Very much so. But it comes out uh, October 1st. Um, uh, not October, November 1st, sorry. Uh, the long game. Okay. Very intriguing looking book. The uh, book looking back at uh, how Doctor Who was brought back. Not not a review yeah. or anything like that of, of that first season, but the 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 background shenanigans to get it back onto the air in the first place, oh, which good. I find intensely more interesting. So, oh so. yes, absolutely. I'm reading The Devil's Candy right now, which is about the making of Bonfire of the Vanities, and that's kind of the same thing. It's all the background nonsense that went into making a movie that turned out to completely tank. <laughs> <laughs> so so all this effort and just struggle and strife, and then it just. It's a disaster anyway. So, yeah. so it's always that stuff's always fascinating. Always, always. Uh, one last bit of news: uh, the uh, Third Doctor Adventures Volume Eight from Big Finish is available now. Monsters and Myths, for, uh, starring Tim Trelaw, of course, as Doctor Who Number Three, Katie Manning, Sadie Miller, John Colshaw as a Brigadier. A uh, whole host of uh, different uh, stories in that box set, available now from Big Finish, where, as you know, they love stories. I they cannot sure believe that we have talked for about nothing for an hour and a half on this here podcast. We sure this week, have. But uh, <laughs> yeah. we almost matched last week. And we had like two interview segments last week. And it's uh, barely longer than this episode. So, uh, but I was dominated by you bragging about Eccleston and me giving you a hard time about Lower Decks. <laughs> so, pretty much. T- sorry, everyone. <laughs> yep. You think we would cut that out? Well, we didn't. We didn't do it. Uh, next week, everyone, uh, of course, we'll be on a little bit later. Because Doctor Who returns in the form of Doctor Who Flux Chapter 1, colon, The Halloween Apocalypse. Uh, Our review episode will be doing a live stream. Uh, Check the social medias. And if you subscribe to the Yar Radio Free Scar YouTube channel, you might even get an email. Although uh, my emails are hit and miss when it comes to channels that I subscribe to. So I'm not promising anything there. Probably because you just hit like. You didn't smash it. I didn't. I only. I only gently caressed well, gently, that like gently, button. Gently, gently caressed it. Yeah. I need to smash the like button. Uh, and then, uh, and then the episode, yeah, the episode itself. Uh, so yeah, we're aiming to record like about 10 p.m. Eastern on Sunday nights ish for the next six weeks. There might be one or two that might be a little bit later. Um, and then, of course, the episode will be out uh, as soon as we can get it out there. Preferably for the your, your Monday morning commute, United Kingdomers, uh, and Australia. Well. As I say, I, I we assume you're Tuesday. just uh, yeah. We can choose. I always just assume you're asleep whenever we're talking. So, um, so mm-hmm. I hope you're enjoying a nice sleep, uh, Australia and New Zealand. Um, and then when you wake up from that sleep uh, in a week, uh, hopefully there'll be an episode of this podcast to listen to. So, uh, until next week, everyone. I am Stephen in Edmonton, Lauren in Vancouver, and Chris in Edmonton. So long for now.
You've been listening to Radio Free Scaro. Find us online at radiofreescaro.com. Follow us on Twitter and Tumblr at Radio Free Scaro. Subscribe to us on iTunes and donate to the show at patreon.com forward slash Radio Free Scaro. Thank you.